Timers are incredibly useful when writing programs. They allow us to delay the execution of a function or execute a function periodically. Sometimes the overhead of a task is too much to do this, so we can rely on timers instead. Rather than waste a hardware timer in a microcontroller, we can use timers to accomplish this. Doing something periodically on a microcontroller is a very common task. This could be blinking an LED, refreshing an LCD, pulling a sensor, or sending a pulse to a servo motor. Often, we want to control exactly when this happens. Let's say we have some periodic function interrupt task A every 220 milliseconds to do something like pull a temperature sensor. If we really only had one task, we probably don't need an RTOS, but let's say we've got other tasks that I'm just not showing here. There are a number of ways to execute this polling function periodically. The most obvious way is to create a separate task and use VTask delay to keep the task in the block state until it's ready to execute again. However, creating a task just to sample something requires a lot of overhead. As we saw, a new task in FreeRTOS on the ESP32 requires close to one kilobyte. Another way to accomplish this is to use the XTask get tick count in an existing task like task A. This function gives you the number of ticks that have elapsed since the scheduler was started, which is similar to the millis function in Arduino. We can periodically check the elapsed time against some timestamp to determine if we need to run our function. Remember that the tick timer is set to a default of one millisecond. So if we need more precision than one millisecond, you'll likely need to use a hardware timer. However, microcontrollers have a limited number of these timers available, and your code will not be very portable, as it will need to configure the timer and handle events in a manner unique to that architecture. Finally, we have software timers, which are available to us at the operating system level. FreeRTOS gives us the ability to create such timers that can call arbitrary functions when they expire. Note that they are dependent on the tick timer, so we will not be able to achieve a timer precision more than one tick, which is one millisecond in our case. These are similar to software interrupts, but operate at the task level. Let's see how that works. When we include the free RTOS timer library, it will create a unique task that runs in the background when the scheduler starts. This task is known as the timer service task or the timer daemon. It is responsible for maintaining a list of timers and calling the associated callback function when one of them expires. Note that this task does not continuously run. Thanks to the list of timers it maintains, it can simply block itself and wake up when the tick timer reaches one of those times. When that happens, we say that the timer has expired and the task will call the associated function. This function is known as a callback function as it's passed to the timer as an argument and invoked inside the timer service task. Because of this, the callback function runs at the same priority level as the timer service task. We want to treat these timer callbacks in a similar manner as interrupt service routines, so we want them to perform their actions quickly and never block. As a result, you should generally not use things like delay functions or allow for blocking when using queues, mutexes, and semaphores inside these callbacks. You do not want to control this task directly. Instead, FreeRTOS gives us a queue and some API functions to access that queue. We send commands to the timer service task by calling those API functions which place commands on the queue. The service task will read commands from the queue and perform the necessary steps to create a new timer, start, stop, restart, and so on. Even though this design does introduce the overhead of having a new task, it allows us to have one task that controls many different timers. To use timers in FreeRTOS, you will want to open the FreeRTOS config.h file. For the ESP32 in Arduino, this is in the ESP32 packages folder, hardware, ESP32, version number, tools, SDK, include FreeRTOS and FreeRTOS. Scroll down to find the config use timers setting and set it to one if it's not set already. The ESP32 version of FreeRTOS includes timer support by default, so we won't need to do anything here. Note that you can also change the other settings, such as the timer service task priority, command queue length, and task stack size. If we track these down in the ESP32 config file, we can see that the timer service task priority defaults to one. 
the Q length is 10 and the stack depth is two kilobytes. Remember that this will be in words instead of bytes if you're working in vanilla free RTOS. Next, let's take a look at the available API functions. Just like we do for kernel objects, we can create and delete timers. We can also start, stop, and reset individual timers. Notice that we have a variety of from ISR functions. If you're sending commands to the timer service task from within an interrupt service routine, you'll want to use these from ISR functions where available. You do not want to block inside of an ISR, which can happen if the queue is full. So these from ISR functions won't block if you're unable to send a command to the queue. Note that you can call x timer git timer daemon task handle to get a handle to the service task. It's really not recommended, but you could get the handle to do things like raise the priority level of the timers. If you want to change the priority level of the timer service task, you're probably better off doing it in the config file so that it does not change at runtime. That being said, the ESP32 port of FreeRTOS actually has this function disabled by default. You'd have to set this include flag or adjust the priority level in the config file if you want the task to run at a different priority. Let's look at an example to see how to use software timers. We'll start with a blank sketch. If you're using vanilla free RTOS, you'll probably have to include timers.h in order to use the software timer API functions. It comes included with the Arduino ESP32 package, so we don't need to include it again here. We'll stick to just one core again for our demo. I'll create a handle to a one-shot timer. A one-shot timer will call an arbitrary function after some time period, but it will only call it once. I'll create my timer callback function. It should return nothing and accept a timer handle as a parameter. This can be used to identify which timer called the function if multiple timers have the same function as their callback. All we'll do is say that the timer expired to the serial terminal. As I've been doing, I'll create a divider before setup so you know where execution begins. In setup, let's configure the serial port and print out a welcome message after a brief delay. We'll then call xTimerCreate and assign the return value to our handle variable. This function requires five parameters. The first is a string for the name of the timer, just like we do with tasks. Then we put in the length of the timer. Remember that this needs to be in ticks. So if we want to set something in milliseconds, we can divide our milliseconds value by the port tick period ms constant. We can't go below one tick, which means that we can't create a less than one millisecond timer with this particular free RTOS configuration. Next is the auto reload setting. Auto reload allows the timer to continually expire and execute the callback, much like the periodic example we saw earlier. For now, let's start with a one-shot timer, so we'll set this to PD false. The timer ID is a pointer to something if we want to create a unique ID for the timer. We can use it to identify unique timers, or we can update this parameter within the callback to remember data between callback calls. For now, let's just set the parameter to zero. We need to cast it as a void pointer, even though it's not actually a pointer. Finally, we give it the name of our callback function. Because the timer uses heap memory to create the necessary structures, it's possible X timer create will fail. So it's a good idea to make sure we don't have a null pointer for our timer handle before continuing. If we do, I'll just print out a simple error message. Assuming the timer could be created, we'll wait for another second, print out a message saying that we're starting the timers, and then actually start our timer using X timer start. We need to provide X timer start with the timer handle and a timeout amount. Recall that commands to the timer task work through a queue, which means we need to specify a queue wait time if the queue is full. Here, I'll use port max delay to wait the maximum amount of time if needed. This essentially says to wait forever if the queue is full. Finally, I'll delete the setup and loop task so you can see that the timers will work without any other tasks running. I'll make sure that nothing is in loop and then upload the program. When it's done, open a serial monitor. You should see our welcome message followed by a starting timers message a second later. A second after that, you should see the message we set in the callback function and that's it. Because it's a one-shot timer, it will not execute again unless we specifically restart the timer from another task. 
let's add an auto reload timer to see how it compares. We'll add a separate timer handle as a global variable. In setup, we'll copy the one shot timer create function and make a few changes. First, we'll set the returned handle to our auto reload timer variable. We'll update the name and change the period to 1000 milliseconds. Next, we'll change the auto reload parameter to PD true so that the timer will execute again after expiring. I'll change the ID to 1 instead of 0 so we can tell the timers apart. However, I'll leave the callback function to be the same as the one shot timer callback. I'll check to make sure neither timer handle is null after being created and start the auto reload timer just after the one shot timer. In the callback function, I'll now uniquely identify the calling timer. To do that, we pass the X timer parameter to the PV timer get timer ID function, which will return us the ID we set during creation. Since it's not a pointer, we'll want to cast it to something like an int or unsigned integer. Then we can compare it to the known timer IDs. Timer ID 0 refers to our one shot timer, so we'll print a message showing that. Then we'll add another if statement to check if timer 1 expired. That's our auto reload timer, so I'll print a unique message here too. Let's upload this to our ESP32. When we run it and open a serial monitor, you should see that the auto reload timer expires first after one second, followed by the one shot timer a second later. However, the auto reload timer keeps executing the callback function every second, whereas the one shot timer simply stops. I hope this helps you understand how to use the two basic timers in free RTOS. And now for your challenge. A common example of timers in microcontrollers is the LCD backlight auto dim feature. Let's pretend that the LED on your ESP32 is the backlight for an LCD. So long as you're using the serial terminal and entering characters, which we'll pretend is a menu on the LCD, the LED should turn on and stay on. However, after five seconds of inactivity, the LED should turn off. Your job is to echo characters to the serial terminal in a new task. Turn on the LED when these characters are being entered, and then use a software timer to turn off the LED after five seconds from when the last character was entered. Here's a hint for you. The X timer start function will restart a counter if it's called before the timer has expired. On the next episode, we'll look at integrating hardware interrupts with RTOS tasks. Good luck and see you then.